What's going on, everybody? Thank you for so much for coming back to About Trout. We are tying staple in the box, box filler, guide fly. Uh, you can tie it in a bunch of different ways. Uh, this time of year, especially here in the Intermountain West, um, we're, we're going into runoff. The water is getting stained, colored up. This pattern has a lot of pop, great profile, great attractor. It would work really well on the East Coast um, as well. So I know you're gonna like this one. Um, I know I'm ramping up on fly tying videos. It's quick for me to shoot these things. I've got like 87 different irons in the fire. We're coming into a peak. Our guide season has been, I've been out a lot and it's been windy and uh, the fish are still eating, but let me tell you what, rowing a boat in a 30 mile an hour wind is no fun. So stay in school kids, uh, remember that pro tip. But we're gonna tie this fly, we'll get right into it. All right, party people, let's make this happen. I have a falling wheel check nymph hook in the vice, size 14 in the bronze. I actually prefer the black nickel finish better, but here we are, I ran out, I'm a human. I have a 2.8 millimeter bead on the front and I'm just coming in with some O2O 0 lead wire. Maybe about six, seven turns. This is just gonna help with the taper. We're gonna twist that off, twist that off and jam that right up into the bead. Next, I'm gonna come in with some UTC 70 denier thread and start right behind that little lead bump. Just build up a little bump um, to, lock, to lock that lead right there in place. All right, I'm gonna trim that and whatever, there's a tag there, it's cool. And I am going to move, advance this down the curved hook shank till we get right to where it starts to slope down. Next, we're going to grab some Coke de Leon. Just, it's a really durable product. With this, I like to do about, I don't know, half a dozen, 7.3 fibers maybe. Uh, but, you know, half a dozen, eight. These tails don't have to be ultra thin. We're not tying pertagons. And on this fly, they don't have to be, you don't need to do it. You know, I'm going to probably go about half, half a shank length. Tighten on my Res Renzetti Presentation 2000. This is an excellent vice. And... Um, you know, I got a master vice, which I think I've threatened to review a bunch. Now that I've locked that um, coat CDL in there, I'm just gonna advance my thread. I'll just trim this up, make it look nice and pretty. Okay, we're good there. So I'm just gonna advance my thread, cover this nasty, those nasty ends up. Okay, next I'm gonna tie in the actual hot rib, which is just shade five in glow bright floss. And what I'm gonna do, I'm not, I'm actually gonna cord this up later. So I'm gonna cut a long piece, um, double it over. And you can see, you know, making myself a loop there. Just gonna pull this through. And what I'll end up doing is putting a dubbing spinner through that and uh, creating that rib and I'll show you a trick to make it more durable so I got that locked in I'm all about efficiency here um, so what we're going to do is cut a piece of um, opal mirage, or, uh, mirage tinsel in opal I bet you didn't know that was the proper proper pronunciation I'm, I'm kidding uh, don't <laughs> don't don't believe me um, so I have some right here you want to leave you want to cut about an inch and a half and just for the sake of efficiency, I'm going to stack this on top of what I just did. I'm going to come back there. That's going to bother me. I could have trimmed it, but whatever. Anyway, I got the rib and I have the what will be the flashback. And we are just advancing down to the tie-in point right there. All right. The nice thing with this Renzetti that you can't see off camera is I do have a material clip on this vise. Um, so by leaving that stuff long, I can just clip it in. 
and get it out of the way. Amazing. All right. We are getting closer and closer to the end. Next, we're going to grab some hair's ear dubbing in dark. And this fly is really cool because it has that two-tone effect. So the abdomen is darker and the thorax is going to be a lighter color, which you often see in nature. So I'm going to grab my hair's ear dark thread. You could use dubbing wax for this one. I'm not going to. And we're just going to twist this up. Onto the thread. When I'm twisting, I like to pull back or pull to the right. I'm right handed, but I pull to the right with my pointer finger and I push to the left with my thumb. So we got that loaded up and we're just going to start advancing this thread. Now this isn't a midge so it doesn't have to be you know thin to win. So you can be a little generous through here. You don't want like a super dummy thick body you do want to build some taper i you know again as crazy as that does sound um i really believe it's important to build taper into your bugs just like just like the naturals just getting a good profile so anyway i'm stabbing myself up that hook is sharp and i'm gonna wrap back or wrap forward to basically right in front of the hook point maybe an eye width in front of the hook point. I'm going to take my mylar, pull it over the back, one loose wrap, pinch, just center this up. Cool. Two wraps, it looks center. If it is off axis, you might as well just quit fly tying. It's not, just hang it up. It's not for you. I'm just kidding. Okay. We all started somewhere. Also, this probably isn't going to be even anyway. Trout have pea-sized brains. It's not going to matter. So I created that loop with the two strands of the Globrite. I'm going to come in here with a dubbing spinner. I'm just going to twist it up. So here comes the hot rib. So I have... This is going to be, this is something you're not going to want to mess up, but in order to make this more durable, I'm going to give it a turn to get ready to palmer this rib. And I'm going to take some solar as bone dry, clean some of this up, but take some solar as bone dry and just kind of touch, touch that rib a little bit. You can clean this up too. Just take off the excess with your finger but you want that bone dry to soak into that rib. And you'll see why, because this is the most brittle part of the fly. So I'm gonna wrap over. And I don't know the magic, the magic number, you know? If it feels good, it is good. So I'm just wrapping forward, four wraps. Let's do five, let's get crazy. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull this mylar out of the way catch that glow bright dunzo trim that then i'm going to take my handy dandy loon light boom cook it that glow bright after this fly fish love this thing trout love this thing white fish love this thing suckers love this thing but the trout are the ones with the teeth and those little trout teeth will bust up that glow bright so by just taking the extra time to give that a little coating of uh of solar as it'll it'll stiffen that up and it'll protect it from those toothy trout all right so now we're just going to build up the thorax we're going to grab some hairs here in a light color so i'm just going to spin up this th thorax All right, advance that thread. We're gonna cover that up. Oh no, I covered one of the hot ribs. 
If there's only four ribs, it won't work. I twist it. That looks good. And then I'm just going to pull my mylar forward. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to trim that off. Boom. All right. Your boy forgot his super glue. So it's okay. There's a fix for that. I'm not going to run to my other area and get it. So I'm just going to, you know, let's touch it with our good old friend Solar as Bone Dry. And we're going to create just a little bit of a hot spot. Come in with the handy dandy whip finisher. One, two, three, boom. I'm going to pull back. Trim that. Cook it one more time. And again, you should just use super glue, but you know, overcome, improvise, adapt. And we did it. Big round of applause. You're a superstar. You just tied. Thanks for tagging along on this video. I know this pattern will produce for you. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, everybody, for watching. And we'll see you guys on the next video. One love.